Oh. Oh. No, we had a bumpy night last night. We had, um, we stayed in this anchorage, which is a beautiful anchorage, but we were just getting away. There's like a headland there that was holding the swell back. And I think we must have got a wind shift from say southeast to south southeast. And all of a sudden, like the, the swell wrapped around. So it's pretty bumpy in here now, which means we're gonna leave, but we're gonna have to motor into this chop. So it's gonna be a bit of a bumpy couple of hours. So the VHF do a weather forecast in the mornings. Um, so it's another 30 knot day. So, um, you know, if we're doing five knots and we've got 30 knots on the nose, that's 35 knots apparent, which is going to be pretty, it's going to be pretty bumpy in here. Cooking up a uh, egg and bacon roll for breakfast. And I have to say that I really love the 1260 galley. I know that, I don't know, the whole galley up, galley down thing is a bit contentious, but I love it. You've got loads of space. Um, I don't mind being kind of tucked away from everything because I don't know whether I'm really into the whole idea of like cooking in amongst all the action and with everyone, not everyone, Nick, kind of, I don't know, I like the separation between the galley and the rest of the living spaces. And I love this window. You can literally just open it and um, get some nice kind of fresh breeze into your galley, which um, I love. So yeah, big thumbs up from me on the galley. Putting a little safety catch up on the door. Um, I don't like the fact that there's no safety. Yeah. So I did not have the most restful night ever. Um, I was up, I don't even know what time, maybe around midnight to um, sort out the mooring line because the mooring ball was hitting the, uh, the hull, our hull. And um, I'm not quite sure why that is because you know, you think right now it's so windy that you'd think we'd be held off the ball. But I think that the wind just died down the wind just died down last night and uh, maybe there was a bit of tired action as well anyway the ball came underneath the boat and was knocking against the hulls so I was up in the middle of the night trying to work out a way to shorten the um, strop oh. <laughs> it is breezy you can see that like flag flapping behind me super breezy don't ask me what strength the forecast again today is is 30 knots and it was 30 knots yesterday too so yeah nice and breezy anyway i was up midnight sorting out the mooring ball strop situation and then several hours later at some other indeterminate time we we're both woken up by this swell that suddenly picked up i'm surprised at how breezy it is if you guys have ever sailed in the sundays let me know whether you had like this kind of wind because um, I was not expecting this. I was expecting really light winds for some reason. I don't know why. That was just an assumption on my part. Obviously I was wrong. I mean, it's beautiful and sunny. Um, but yeah, can't stay here. We're just getting thrown around all over the place. Shall we take that flag down before we leave? All right, we are in Hayman Island at the moment and we are going to go and find somewhere that's got a little bit more protection, hopefully. So, from the swell. So we're going to, this is the morning check-in session over the radio, checking where all the charter boats are. It is actually really interesting to know where everyone else is staying. It's actually quite helpful. So we're in Hayman Island at the moment and we're gonna head down to somewhere called Stonehaven Bay. And hopefully that will give us protection from the swell. I think it's gonna be quite blustery in there um, because there are apparently according to the cruising guide like wind bullets that come down off the um, off the mountains but I'm kind of okay with that I don't mind that at all at all in a catamaran it's a swell that kind of is difficult to deal with but wind itself is really not an issue 
um, and I'm hoping that that keeps some other charters away so that it's a slightly quieter or less competition for the mooring bulls. So that's our strategy. Um, it's eight o'clock and we are going to get going um, so that we can try and get in as people leave and pick up a mooring bull. Nick, you're ready? All right, let's go. After the more benign conditions of the New South Wales coast earlier in the year, having a variety of more challenging conditions here in the Whitsundays really allowed us to prepare for sailing and living on board our 1370, which is currently in build in Vietnam. Today the forecast was 25 knots gusting up to 30 knots. We didn't know the exact wind speed because the anemometer on our charter boat wasn't working, but the charter company policy was that we couldn't have the sails up in these blustery conditions. While we would have loved to have put the boat to the test, we had to comply with the terms of our charter agreement. However, motoring into this short chop and 25 knots of wind was its own kind of test and one that the 1260 rose to really well. I won't say it was enjoyable, but it was definitely of use for us in our preparation for living on board our Seawind 1370. And well, before we knew it, we were motoring into a much calmer and absolutely beautiful anchorage. Be right. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, I'm just burning the end. Good afternoon. It is. It's just lunch. Just gone lunchtime actually, and uh, yeah, we tucked into this bay. Um, I reckon it's we, the anemometer is uh, up the fritz and I'm not going up the mast because it's not my boat. It must be knocking 35 knots with the gusts, which essentially makes it, it's, it makes it far too windy for us to sail. If it was our boat, we probably wouldn't be sailing either actually. I think, you know, we're pretty fair weather when it comes to things like this, but uh, 35, uh, the companies who uh, own the boat are like, no, you're not sailing in this. So we're tucked into a bay, but what I do on days like this when it is like pretty windy is it really gives you a good idea kind of like when you get these gusts coming through to see where all the squeaks and, and clangs come from on, the, on, on a boat and it's kind of useful because the other thing is when you get into a cabin you hear different noises to when you're you know in the saloon and then when you're up on deck so I've just literally moved around the boat and I can identify three or four different noises that kind of I'm slightly misophonic I find lots of like kind of weird squeaks super irritating so I go around and fix stuff um, being misophonic on a boat is not not the best there's some squeaks coming from the halyards, there's some squeaks coming from the main sheet, there's some squeaks coming from the jib sheet, I think. And um, as I said, you're getting a gust coming through now. I will use that to kind of like try and identify that and then work through the boat so that, you know, I know that everything is um, tickety-boo. Hunky Dory. Hunky the Dory. More hunky than Dory, but nonetheless, actually I'm more Dory than hunky. <laughs> <laughs> On with some work. Would we say more hunky than Dory? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Wasn't Dory the fish in Finding Nemo? Yes. <laughs> so the first thing that I always try and address is when um, when the spinnaker sheet, when the spinnaker halyard is tied up against the mast, because it's it, it always clangs. You always get clang bang from that. I've just tied it off on the uh, on the push pit on the port side push pit. Yeah, that oscillates in the circle. Yeah. I'm just gonna you know groinch that uh, main halyard up so it doesn't clang.
I've had a very lazy afternoon. I have done very little. There's no real um, internet here, um, no real coverage, so I've not even been on the internet. No answering emails, nothing like that. It's actually quite, quite lovely. Nick uh, commandeered my Kindle about halfway through the afternoon and is reading one of my books <laughs> on the Kindle, which I find hilarious. And I've just been, I've just been chilling out really. I've just been kind of reading the cruising guide and I don't know, just like thinking about life and just watching the world go by and you know, watching all the boats come and go and it's just been really, really lovely. I've just had a shower, as you can see from my wet hair. Nick is having a shower at the moment and the sun's gonna set within the next hour or so. I'm gonna get out some beers, just enjoy the view and just have a nice chilled out evening. Yeah, you know what? I know this is like, I don't know, guys, we'll like that everyone who like, owns big boats is gonna be like, yeah, and having a separate, separate shower stall it's like such a massive luxury to me. Amazing, like having a shower door, I'm like, oh my God, it's just like, yeah. It's hard to like turn the shower off and get out now. Pretty nice, right? Did you say you look nice, right? Yes, I thought I did. <laughs> what, what did you actually say? Anchorage is pretty nice, right? Oh, yes. That's one way to dry my hair really quickly. <laughs> Who needs a hairdryer when you've got like 25 knots of wind out? Mm? If you poke your head out the window. I'm a very relaxed artist today. I think we needed it, babe. It's yeah. been full on. I, know. I think, you know, sometimes you just have to go a bit, but let's just sit tight. You know, compose ourselves. I haven't felt like reading a book for months. I know, I'm quite shocked that you put up my Kindle and you're reading my books. Oh, well. You must be really desperate. No, I just, sometimes you, I find that, you know, you've got to be in the mood for playing an instrument, you've got to be in the mood for reading a book. This is what we've got for the week. We've got strong winds coming in east southeast, which essentially means that it's Tuesday today, and that's not those winds aren't going to abate until weekend. the weekend. So we've got five, six days of, of, of pretty windy weather. South southeast, we've got wind coming up the channel and giving you the fetch. As this front, as this high pressure system moves through, you get wind shift. Wind shift's gonna bring there, so you're gonna get relief from the lee of the land here. So any anchorage on the west side of Hook Island or Sunday Island or Hamilton Island is gonna be good until the weekend. So my suggestion would be um, as follows. We stay here tonight, mm -hmm. yeah, Stonehaven. Tomorrow we are gonna be able to get ourselves with an east southeast coming through there. We'll be able to come around here and there's Nara and Makona, Masona Inlet? Makona. Makona. So Nara is actually a pretty good place to go. Yeah, there's some, um, there's a nice walk at Nara um, right. and some Aboriginal rock paintings. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, I'd be interested in that. Yeah. Tomorrow Nara, mm -hmm. that's Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Th this is an anchorage, Sid Harbour. This is where you can't swim, right? This is where you can't swim, where all the shark attacks were, but there's a really good um, hike up to Whitsunday Peak, which gives you really nice views over the rest of the distance. Okay, so we've got today. This is Whitehaven Beach, and this is an awesome Oh no, we're definitely going there. Yeah. So I think really from there, I think we're looking maybe at Hamilton Island. What we can do is we can come up around the top of um, Hawk Island, and there's some nice anchorages on the northern side as yeah. well. So I think, yeah, that, so basically following, what we'll do is we'll follow the weather. Okay, so we've got lots of little languages. Okay, that's good. All works fine. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good plan. So thank you for watching this week's episode. As we um, wait for another gorgeous sunset in the wet Sundays, <laughs> we hope that you are living your best life. <laughs>
Um, so, thanks for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Give us a thumbs up, give us a thumbs down. No, avoid the thumbs down. Thumbs up is always good. And a comment. And a we, comment. we like the comments. We like the comments. Yes. And we'll see you next week. Goodbye. Cheers.